Hi guys, um, Terry here again. Um, I'm going to be doing um, the solution to question 10 in the January 2021 people, right? Okay, so we have question 10 here. Um, we have a matrix W, right? Um, determine the 2 by 2 matrix L such that W plus L is equal to zero, right? So what we're saying here, right, it's W plus L is equal to this zero matrix, right? Um, the matrix W is three, six minus two, five, right? And you're adding it to some matrix L, which we don't know, let's call it A, B, C, D, and that is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0, right? Now, when you add everything on the left side, you're going to get 3 plus A, right? On this side, you're going to get um, 6 plus B, right? Uh, this one is going to be minus 2 plus C, this one is 5 plus D, right? And all of that is equal to 0, 0, 0, 0 right now those two matrices at the bottom here they are equal so what we can say is that 3 plus a is equal to 0 therefore a is equal to minus 3 the next thing we can say is 6 plus b is equal to 0 therefore b is equal to minus 6 right um, the next thing we can say is minus 2 plus c is equal to 0 so therefore c is equal to 2 and the last thing is that 5 plus D is equal to 0, so D is equal to minus 5, right? So this matrix L that we want here is going to be minus 3, minus 6, 2, minus 5. That's it. The next part here, they are telling us that they want us to figure out the matrix P such that WP is equal to 1, 0, 0, 1. So students have to recognize that this here is my identity matrix, right? They have to realize that that's the identity matrix. And if we take a matrix M and we multiply by my inverse of a matrix, I'm going to get my identity matrix. So we can apply that scenario here. Um, we are taking W and you're multiplying it by P, which is what they want us to find. So really and truly what they're asking us to find is this, the inverse of the matrix. So um, W is 3, 6, minus 2, 5. So W is 3, 6, minus 2, 5, right? And our objective is to find the inverse of the matrix. Now, the first thing we need to do, we need to find the determinant of the matrix, right? So we need to take this number and multiply by this number. So that's 3 by 5 minus we need to take six multiplied by minus two so this is six multiplied by minus two so this is five trees are 15 minus six by minus two is minus 12 so this here is going to be 15 minus minus 12 is going to give me 27 right that's going to be 27 all right so next step now that is my determinant so the inverse of the matrix, right, that's this, is given by 1 over the determinant, which is 1 over 27. And what we have to do is to find the adjoint of the matrix W. So we must swap the positions of the 3 and the 5. So put 5 here and put 3 here. Then we have to put a minus sign in front of this and put a minus sign in front of the minus 2. So you'll get positive 2. So that's my, um, that's my inverse of this matrix here. Right now, I could simplify this further if I want. Right, in which case it'll be five over twenty-seven here. Um, minus six over twenty-seven. That's going to be two over nine. So this here is minus two over nine. This one is going to be two over twenty-seven, and the last one is going to be three over twenty-seven, which is one over nine. Right. So that's my inverse matrix here. So therefore, this matrix P that they're talking about is going to be. 5 over 27 minus 2 over 9, 2 over 27, and then 1 over 9, right? That's my, um, that's my inverse matrix there, or the matrix P that they want us to find.
The next part now, they said we have a right angle triangle. We have X, Y, and Z. And they said when M is transformed by the matrix N, the image M prime, find the coordinates of M prime. So all you guys need to do here, we need to take the matrix N, which is 0, 1, 1, 0, right? And we must multiply. So the coordinates were X, Y, and Z. So every one of these coordinates here, you're gonna write it in a column vector format. So you're gonna write this as one, one. This here is gonna be three, one. This here is going to be three, four. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna multiply this matrix here. When I do that, I'm gonna get my images. So I'm gonna get X prime, Y prime, and Z prime. All right, so we need to be careful how we multiply this. So we're doing row by column. So to get this x prime, you're gonna take this row and multiply by this column. So zero by one is zero, one by one is one, so therefore this is gonna be one. To get the next x prime value, we're gonna take this row and multiply by this column. One by one is one, zero by one is zero, so this is one, one. Next thing we're gonna do now to get the y prime, we're gonna take this row here and multiply by this column. Zero by three is zero, one by one is one, so this is one here. To get the next y prime value, we're gonna take this row, multiply by this column. So one by three is three, zero by one is zero, so this here is going to be three. And therefore, the last one now, it's this row by this column here. Zero by three is zero, one by four is four, so this is four. And then the last value here is one zero by three four. One by three is three, zero by four is zero. So this is gonna be three here. So therefore the coordinates of x prime is one one, y prime is one three, and z prime is four three, right? So those are the coordinates of my um, right angle triangle after the transformation n. The next part here now is a vector question, right? Um, so they give us some information here. OP is 3U, OQ is V, Q is a midpoint. So this point is a midpoint. So that means that this length and this length are the same. Um, M is the midpoint of PQ. So therefore that length and this length here is the same. And L, where is L? L is a point such that, okay, so they give us some information. Let's see what they want us to work out. First thing they want us to work out, what is LM, right? We're working out LM. So let's go to the diagram, right? So you're starting at the point L and you wanna go to the point M. So this here is LM, right? Now, let's see. So if I were you guys, the first thing I will try to work out is what is PQ, right? Now PQ, right, that is this vector here, right, is going to be, so you're starting at P and you wanna end up at Q. So PQ can be found by going from P to O and then from O to Q, right? Now P to O, this is to you, this is um, U. So therefore, if I wanna go this direction, that's gonna be three U. So this here is gonna be minus three U plus OQ, which is V. Right, so that's my vector PQ. Now I wanna get, um, what are we working out again? LM. Right, so we're working out a vector LM. So LM, right, is equal to LP plus PM. Right, but the thing is, PM is actually a half of PQ. Right, so LP plus PM, but PM, like I said, it's a half of PQ, right? And the reason why we can say that is M is the midpoint of PQ. Now LP is U plus a half multiplied by PQ. You just work out PQ there. You got minus three U plus V. So this is gonna be U minus three over two U plus a half V, right? If I simplify this, I'm going to get one minus three over two 
and I'm gonna get minus a half. So this is gonna be minus a half u plus a half v, right? So that's my answer for the vector Lm. Right, now the next thing that they want me to work out in the question, right? So this is Lm we just worked out, right? So that's this. We need to figure out PR. So go back to the diagram again. Where is PR? So PR now is this vector across here, right? That's PR. So if I want to go from P to R, I can go from P to O, right? Uh, let me write this on the next side here. So PR, according to the diagram, right, is going to be PO plus OR, right? Now PO. We already know that PO is minus 3U plus OR. If this is V, it means that this also has to be V because Q is the midpoint of OR. So this is going to be 2V. Right? So it's minus 3U plus 2V. That one is straightforward. Right? Now the next part is the part that typically gives students trouble because they want us to prove that L, M, and R are collinear. When you see the word collinear, that means that L, M, and R lie on the same straight line. So therefore, if I were to draw a straight line from L to M and I extend it, it'll also pass through R. So L, M, and R are collinear, and we have to prove that. And it's something like four marks for this. So whenever you have to prove things are collinear, we need to prove that two vectors are parallel and they share a point in common. That's essentially what we have to do. You already know L, M. Right, so let's let's write what we know so far. Lm is equal to minus a half u plus a half e. minus a half u plus a half e. Right, so that's Lm. What we should do is to write or probably figure out the vector Lr. Right, you can go ahead and find the vector Lr. So Lr. Right, is L O plus O R, right, according to the diagram. Now L O, right, is actually minus 2U and O R is 2V. So this here is going to be minus 2U plus 2V, right? So that's L R, right? Now, we have the two vectors here, so let me write this on a separate page, because this is how we're going to prove this, right? So Lm is minus a half u plus a half v, right? And the other vector, which is Lr, is minus 2u plus 2v, right? Now, what you have to do, you have to look at these two vectors and see if you can find a relationship between both of them, right? That's basically what we're trying to do here. Now, LR, right, is the longer vector, right? If you look at it here, LR is much longer than LM, right? So what we can do, we can try to write, oh, hold up, eh? I'll put minus 2U plus 2V. So what we're trying to do, we should try to write LR in terms of LM. Right? That's what we should try to do. So let's see. A half u plus a half v. Right? Now let's see what I need to put a number here that'll make this multiplication equal to this figure here. Right? Now to do that, I just need to multiply this thing by 4. Right? So LR can be written as 4 and this whole thing in bracket here. But this here is actually LM, right? So therefore LR is actually equal to four times LM, right? So here's what we're gonna say. So since LR, right, is a scalar multiple of LM, we can see the uh, parallel, right? So whenever you want to show something, uh, some 
two vectors are parallel, we need to show that one is a scalar multiple of the next, right? So since LR is a scalar multiple of M LM, they are parallel, right? And since the vectors or the vector LM and LR share a common point L, right? Because if you notice, we have a L here and you have a L here. That means you have a common point. So since they share a common point L, right? That means that L, right? M and R are collinear, right? So this is typically how you write up your answer for this to prove that things are collinear. You need to show that the two vectors are parallel and they share a common point, right? So that's question 10 in the January 2021 paper. So like I said, hit like and subscribe and um, hit the notification bell. Share this with whoever you want, right? I uh, hope you guys like my videos. Take care, guys.